Good morning. It is extremely humid. Thankfully, um, we've had a good break from the rain. We've had a few days now with no rain and it's been allowing the ground to really soak up all of that water that had flooded. Did I turn the fence off? Leon! Leon, can you turn the fence off for the poultry nut bud? All right, I don't know if I turned it off. And it's, I mean, it's not hitting like super hot. It's sitting at 2.7, but that definitely would make me feel uncomfortable if I cross it and it's hot. I know, guys. I'm going to let you out in a minute. Hold on. So as you can see, the um, pasture flock has been moved. We've got them set up here running along the wooded pasture fence line. We mowed the grass down nice. And they are happy as can be here. Lots of space, plenty of room, nice grass in there tractor so that they're not on mud because it got really really bad over where they were originally so but now is it off okay good so I did turn it off all right hi guys all right come on out guys plenty of grass speckles laying an egg the ducks are laying eggs. She had tried to make a nest, but of course we moved the tractor, so now she's not sitting on them, so we'll try again. This is not where this belongs. Ooh, but look, they just laid there. Maybe they'll collect eggs. We're gonna leave those eggs, okay, bud? Well, you know what, here, let's move these eggs. Here, let's move these eggs over to those eggs. Let's see if maybe she'll, she'll sit on them. Leanne, can you help me? No, they're fine in here. They're fine out there. That's where we want them. Come help me move these eggs. Let's put them. Let's put them. Let's see if maybe we can get her to sit on them. Hi, oh, Speckle. Sorry, my baby. I see you got a duck egg in there. She's like, oh, it's not a duck egg. It's my egg. <laughs> all right, go ahead and place them all in a clutch. There we go. All right, let's see if she sits on them. So thankfully things are starting to dry up out here. The garden, however, um, <clears throat> there's good news and bad news. The garden ended up sitting in water for about uh, three to five days. And certain things survived and certain things didn't. And unfortunately, none of our tomatoes survived. They are just completely traumatized. I mean, these are actually looking like they may recover, but these are just, they're done. They're not even acting like they're trying to make a comeback. So, I think at this point they're gonna be stunted even if they do come back. So I think at this point I need to just cut my losses and pull them up, harvest whatever green tomatoes are on there, and plant again. The ground's soaked up, finally drying up. My trellis, ugh, that's just not looking. That's all gonna get pulled up. And uh, I'm not sure what we're gonna do with the trellis. All the squash is bad. Well, apparently we had a cucumber. Oh, I didn't even see that cucumber. We'll go ahead and pull up the squash, maybe just plant new rows of squash and go from there. So basically, as you can see, I'll bring you around from the side so you can see better. Basically, the back half of the trellis is just dead because the swale comes diagonally this way, coming in through the back, moving across in this direction so it basically flooded this whole section through the trellis through the tomatoes through the cabbage and it just pooled here it was just not good i mean look at the cabbage the cabbage totally traumatized the onions look like they're doing okay maybe the onions will survive i'm going to probably transplant them somewhere garlic is surviving so we'll see. We're gonna have to.
to do some major cleaning up in here, rip up stuff, and uh, start fresh. So green beans somewhat survived. Um, the 1,500-year-old uh, cave bean, it's getting to be about that time that we're letting them dry on the trellis to harvest them because they're dry beans. So we're letting that happen. We did have one loofah survive. Oh, we have another loofah coming in. Oh, I don't know. That's kind of got some damage on it. I don't know if that one will survive. Mama. What? Helicopter. helicopter. Oh, it is a helicopter. Can't really see it all that well, but that's a helicopter. I know nothing about helicopters, buddy. Sorry. So we're letting these dry. Uh, I'm not sure if I should, oh, this fell off. I'm not sure if I should go ahead and harvest them and let them dry at home, if that's something that we can do, because it's so humid out here. I'm afraid, like, see, for instance, I saw one. Where is it? Um, where'd it go? Oh, this one. This is all wet. That's rot. That's mold. That's no good. Mm -mm. It's on the stem. Why is it on the ground? I don't know. It's, it's fine, buddy. Don't worry. So, but these will uh, watch. The ones that are up off the ground are looking like they're doing pretty good. They're still green. They'll dry on the vine. That's what we want. The uh, Kentucky Wonder, they've, they're coming in. So we're gonna harvest some of these. The Blue Lake, we're gonna harvest some of these. I noticed that the Kentucky Wonder, you can see a difference. See, these are very, flat and then the blue lake they're very thin so ooh, it's really soft and then we've got the purple potted watch out buddy what's our purple yeah the purple potted are purple I think we're just gonna need to redo all of this but look at we did get a few purple potted so far so they also produce purple flowers they do produce purple flowers very before, pretty. Before it, it's kind of like a violent purple. Violent? You mean violet? <laughs> oh, look, we do have another loofah coming in. Yeah. Right there. I don't see it. Aha! So unfortunately, our Roma tomatoes in the front, they took quite a beating from the flooding. So they're I mean, they still have fruit on them, but I think we're just going to harvest all of the, all of the green tomatoes. Just have some fried green tomatoes and uh, go from there. So we'll check in. Oh, looks like the uh, loofah is trying to take over the asparagus. No, you don't. Get back in there. So, so far, I'm not really seeing any signs that would tell me that the asparagus got flooded out. I'm hoping that because the roots are so deep, they're gonna survive this. I really need to get in here and clean. Oh, that's not what I wanna see. That is concerning. See that. See this, this orange is dead. I'm hoping that the asparagus didn't get damaged. So, we'll see. Um, if anyone has um, experience with asparagus, I know that you're supposed to let it fern out for the first year to establish, but I mean, once it gets fully grown, and how long until you, like, top it to let it go back to the ground? Like, please let me know. I, I, I can't imagine that you just let it do this. You have to, at some point, top it. I haven't cut a single one at the base, but they're, like, starting to lay over. So, please let me know in the comments down below if you have experience with this. That'd be amazing. But strawberries are surviving. That's good. We haven't lost any strawberries to the flooding so far. Even down here where it was like standing water, the strawberries are actually doing doing pretty good. Oh, we had a strawberry. Look, we got a strawberry in here. My marigold died. Yeah, but it was flooding, buddy. I'm sorry. But all these all the other marigolds survived. Yeah. Sorry, sugar. I'm sorry, baby, but it's okay, we'll, we'll come in, we'll clear this whole patch out, we'll rip all the old dead stuff out and uh, clean it up because I actually need to bring the garden out a little bit and mulch heavily here at the border and dig up the sods so that it uh, 
doesn't continue to try and grow into the garden because that's definitely a problem I'm having. This looks like a total mess, but I've been meaning to bring in more mulch into this side anyways. We will be doing a cleaning of the garden. What, buddy? I saw, I saw a red bird. Yeah? yeah? Probably saw a cardinal. So Davis and I were discussing the situation with the flooding and um, basically... And, Okay, so I need actually I need to kind of clarify things with everyone because I don't think I, I really explained it fully. So on our property, and I'm going to show a diagram over this, our property in um, the south section of it has uh, something called swales. And I'm not fully versed in the purpose of swales 100%. But I do know that they offer multiple benefits, um, such as uh, irrigation. Um, I believe they also help with erosion. I'm not sure yet. But um, the most common use for them is irrigation. And you're commonly down here in Florida, you see them in uh, orange groves. Now, this was not an orange grove. This was actually, this property used to be wetlands um, that were managed by South Florida Water Management District. And they came in and delineated the wetlands, reconfigured the property, and whenever they basically reconfigured, they brought in dirt, they set up the, the property, and they didn't really do a good job of planning it. Unfortunately, there's a lot of flaws with it, poor engineering. But, um, so, in that section to the south, it's... It's somewhat obvious they're very, very subtle swales. You might mistake it for just hilly land, or just like kind of like rolling hills almost, but they're very, very subtle. But closer to what's going to be our backyard, it gets even more subtle because it's starting to go into like the flat area. So the last one, there's two. I hadn't realized it, but there's actually two swales. One um, going through the orchard, and the orchard so far is acting like it's doing okay. Um, we do plan on relocating the orchard um, to where we're going to put our new orchard, um, but there was a second swale that we had no idea about that goes right diagonally through um, half of the garden, and that was where our problem arose. Now, some people were commenting, dig a trench. It's, I mean, just look at, look at the size of this. So it's a very wide, spanning from there to the back of this. So it's probably about like four foot wide. And then it goes all the way. This is just not something that I can physically dig a trench around to stop. This is something that's gonna have to take like significant reworking and digging. So likely whenever we build the house, we are going to uh, dig out and redirect the swale that comes through here and just kind of divert it into one of the other swales outside of this area and just kind of build up because this is also, while this is planned to be part of the garden, it is also planned to be part of our backyard. So we would just kind of build up this whole section up and divert the swale off to the other swales and do that so that the, the water drains around and away from our yard and the garden and we don't have any flooding hopefully in the future. So we'll keep you guys posted on that, um, and uh, we'll go from there. As you can see, the cabbage is pretty much just totally traumatized, and I don't know if it's gonna even be worth trying to let it make a comeback. Like, see that just completely rotted off at the base. The onions are doing good. The bulbing onions and the bunching onions are doing good, so I'll likely transplant those to a new section of the garden over here, and we'll just have a row of onions, and then, um, See, the because uh, the tomatoes, the, the peppers, and the um, okra were actually in standing water as well, but they were actually pretty resilient. The peppers, as you can see, they're actually not doing horribly. We lost, we lost quite a few, but I think we've got a full row of peppers that survived, and we'll just transplant the ones from the other row that survived into this row. The okra, okra survived. I was shocked because this was standing in water for a long while. So the okra survived. The young new okra survived. Our ground cherries died. That's not... I'm not happy about it, but that's okay. We can replant. The Swiss chard survived. Um, we do have some Swiss chard and I mean, yeah. So the corn, let's see how the corn did. I haven't checked the corn this morning. I know that corn does love rain, but it was standing in water. So the corn, let me get down on its level. Corn is actually not doing too bad. We've got almost a full row the uh, Silver Queen Hybrid 
sweet corn, silver and gold hybrid sweet. It's really shoddy, as you can see from this row. The uh, peaches and cream hybrid sweet corn is doing great. And uh, the top pack sweet corn from Peaceful Valley, it's, it's kind of hit and miss. So I'm gonna have to come in and sow more corn in these two rows and try and get them to grow. They're, you can see they're a little stressed from the water. So, cause this was, this whole back corner was just standing water. So we'll see, we'll see. So far we've, we do have some corn popping up. I'm hoping that I put planted them close enough that they'll cross pollinate well. But we're definitely gonna have to come in and fill in these gaps for this corn so that we get better, poll good pollination. So this is where the chicken nuggets and the chicken tractor were. So just to show you, this was mowed. This was what they were on. So this is where they left it. This is how it grew back afterwards. Look at how lush and thick that is. That just looks gorgeous. So um, excited to see how that grows in. We'll let that grow in, but we moved the chicken nuggets and Miss Magnolia over here. So they have been doing good. We were um, hesitant to move them out of the chicken, out of the poultry net, but we needed them in an area in a way that I could move them more frequently. And so what we did was we actually set up a trap, a baited trap here. I know you guys are ready for breakfast. I'm about to feed you. And so far nothing's gotten. What happened, buddy? Oh, you okay, buddy? <laughs> so, but I mean, look at how big they've gotten. Hi, guys. Yeah, you guys are doing great. I know, it's breakfast time. And look at Miss Magnolia. Hi, baby girl. You guys are doing good. Let's get you guys some breakfast. So update on the little duckies that we hatched. So we ended up, whoop, the lady never came to get the two, last two of our bucks that hatched. But we have the uh, khaki Campbell and you can't see him. Look a little Cayuga is doing great. They're all doing great. Let them chicken nuggets. You gonna try and get a duckling? Oh, you want to get the Cayuga? Yeah. I've been it's trying to get that it's so there. black, I can't even see it back in the back on the camera. Here, if you want to, if you want to go around and herd it up here, I'll grab it as it comes through. There you go. There you go. Herd it this way. Come here, baby. Come here, baby. There you go. Oh. Hi, sweetheart. It's okay. It's okay. So, everyone is doing good. We haven't had any new casualties. And, uh, yeah, everyone's doing good. Miss Annabelle's ligaments, li Miss Annabelle's ligaments have been softening the last few days. So I am very hopeful. Hi, Axel. Will you let me give you chin scratches? Can you let me give you chin scratches? Yes, there you go. Oh, that feels good. But Miss Annabelle's uh, ligaments have been softening. So I'm hopeful. Her teeth still haven't swollen. So we're just kind of waiting and watching. But oh man, look at that udder. That is, uh, that's an udder. Isn't it, Axel? Hi, buddy. Hi, buddy. You want chin scratches again? You want chin scratches again? There you go, yes. So I had a dream last night that I came out here and Maple had had her babies. But unfortunately, that's not the case this morning. No new babies, no new developments. Um, we actually, um, about a week ago, had a scare with Mocha, 
where she was um, she was prolapsing. And uh, if you don't know what prolapsing is, prolapsing is basically where the um, birth canal actually protrudes. And uh, it's normally, commonly, you don't hear about it until after they've kitted, um, which was concerning because she hadn't had her babies. And so um, I reached out to the, uh, to the universe of the people that know more than me. And uh, Rose with Wholesome Roots actually came back with some perfect advice. Her husband had worked on a sheep farm and so he had a lot of experience with this and she said that she needed calcium and there was two ways that she said to do it. She said you could take, um, it was a, a CMPK drench that you give to them orally via a, um, a, drencher, a drencher or like a syringe but it is, uh, the solution is caustic which means that it, it burns, it burns them. Uh oh. Oh, we've got a we've got somebody working out issues in the silky coop. Oh, looks like we've got a looks like I think we found our first rooster. Hey guys. Hey. Hey. Knock it off. Be nice in there. King Daddy, why aren't you keeping order? Like, dude, that's like your job. Keep order. Keep the peace. Y'all letting these two fight. Fix it. Yeah, tell them who's boss. Anyways, so like I was saying, you could give, um, one of the first things she said is you could give her a CMPK um, drench, and, um, but like I said, it's, it's caustic, it's, it's, it, it burns their mouth and throat, so I really tr didn't want to do it. She said, the, the other option was to give them crushed Tums. So um, I got both, just to be safe, and uh, we uh, got, we did the drench, and she suggested to mix it with some molasses to make it a little bit more palatable for her. And so we got the drench, we got the CMPK pay, um, drench, we got the molasses, well we had molasses, but we, um, <clears throat> it, she wasn't eating the Tums, so I had to go the route and I had to give her the CMPK drench. I felt so horrible because it was so much of it, but we got her to get it down. And we brought her home, kept her in the horse trailer so I could monitor her for the next 48 hours. And she recovered. She hasn't done it since. She's doing great. Um, I actually got them a uh, mineral pail out here for them um, just to make sure they have a little extra. It's like one of those full, full mineral pails that you can get. But um, I just wanted to make sure she had what she needed. And she's made a full recovery. She hasn't prolapsed since. And... Uh, I'm really happy with that, but unfortunately no, uh, no new developments with the goats. They're just extra fat. Isn't that right, Maple? I know, babies. I know. You guys are pigging away on that, aren't you? Yeah, hi, Saffron. So, they're eating away. She has bagged up considerably. All of them have, actually. They both, they all have their udders. So I can't imagine that they're gonna be too much longer. Hopefully by the end of the month, they will have kitted. So I did wanna give you guys, oh my gosh, it's so humid, I'm sticking to myself. That's how humid it is out here. It's not even like, I mean it is hot, but because of humidity it makes, because of the high humidity in Florida, I think it's like 100% humidity right now. It is so, ugh, it feels horrible. But um, I wanted to show you guys the wooded pasture where we had come in um, a few months back and mowed and cleared out a lot of the underbrush to let the grass come in and grow. And uh, yesterday I came out and mowed it again. I've only mowed it twice, but look at it. It's, the grass has really come in and I am really happy with it. I still gotta get in and continue on. Oh, look at the lob lollies blooming. Oh my goodness. So we have, Mostly magnolia trees and oak trees out here, but we also have one loblolly tree. Let me see if I can get up close enough to it. The, the, the brush is just very dense here. But look at it. And they're all over it. Let me see if I can see them all. They're so pretty. And they just, they're just dappled all over the tree. But I am really happy with how the uh, 
the wooded pasture is coming. I still got to work on that area past there. Um, just watching the water and where it's at because there's certain areas where there's still standing water like right here. You can see that there's still some standing water here from the flooding because this is just, just because this is the low area of the uh, pasture. That over there, the cluster of trees in front of us, that is the lowest area, the lowest spot point. So that's gonna have the most water. Actually, I could go in there. I haven't been in there. I haven't taken you guys in there. <gasps> Look at all these elderberries. Oh my gosh. I forgot my basket at home. I was gonna harvest everything today. I'm gonna have to do it tomorrow. But look at all those elderberries, those black clusters. Oops, so yep, here we go, getting into the uh, water. A lot of water. So, ooh, the uh, famed floating ant. That, those are ants. The ants have made a bridge. You don't wanna to touch that. That, that'll make you have a bad day. But, see all this water back here? I'm just gonna gingerly step over the ants and not touch them. But this is our canopy, kind of like a hammock in here. Ooh, it's getting, it's getting a little deep. It's getting a little deep in here. But uh, you can see our uh, hammock in here. And this is kind of in between where the house is gonna go and the uh, back pond. Ooh, am I, gonna have, am I gonna be able to go any deeper? Am I gonna find some higher? There we go. All right, getting a little bit higher over here. But this is the uh, lowest point of the property where the water collects in. This would be what would be considered the actual true wetlands. So this is actually, if you guys recall from whenever we had the uh, hurricane prep, this is where I was actually getting Annabelle and Lexi painted up. I'm sure it's beautiful in here, but uh, but yeah. Let's get out of here. Let's find, let's wade our way out of here. Try not to get water back filling into my boots. But a lot of water, a lot, a lot of water. Let me take you guys to the other section of the uh, wooded pasture, wetland pasture. But I still have to mow down this section again for the second time. This is, I mowed this section and this is how it came back in. So there is definitely a lot more grass than there was before. There's still some weeds and stuff that we like this uh, Caesar weed. This we want to get, we want that gone. That is very invasive, this soda apple. So that's something we're working on. But it is a work in progress and I have to say I'm really happy with the results of this where we ran the cows and the horses on it. They mowed it down heavily because you couldn't even really walk back here. It was so dense with, with underbrush. So they mowed that down. Then I was able to come in and clean it up with the mower and expose the ground to the sun so that the grass could come in. The grass is coming in in full now and uh, it's looking so much better. Ooh, 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 ooh. And there's one other thing. There's another thing I gotta show you guys. Hi, buttermilks. Look at that. Those are grapes. We have the wild muscadine grapes. This, this bush, let me see if I can find, where are they? There's a couple more, but there's little clusters all over the place coming in. So we are gonna have some muscadine grapes to harvest and they go up. Oh my gosh, I actually see some black ones. <gasps> I see some ripe ones up there. Oh, I'm gonna have to bring the ladder out now. Oh man, oh, cause I wanna get them before the birds do. I want some grapes. So, grapes, magnolias, loblollies. Still trying to figure out what this tree is, but I mean, look at this. This was all densely overgrown. And now look at it. The grass has just come in in full. Because when I first mowed it, there was just nothing but the bases of weeds and ferns. 
trying to figure out what this tree is. If anyone knows, let me step back and get a real good view of it. So it bushes up on the top. Nice, nice trunk. This is what the leaves look like. So here are the leaves. And my first thought was um, a nightshade, type of nightshade, because it's got these little red berries. See these berries? It's definitely not a pepper bush. It doesn't have the right leaf or the berry clusters. But I hope it's not a nightshade because I don't want nightshades on the property. But it's such a nice little shade tree. So if anyone has any idea what it could be, I mean, look at, look at that. Look at that reach. That is such a nice tree for shade. And I love the trunk of it. I would, I would love to keep this tree, but if it's a nightshade, that scares me. But I mean, like, look at this. That's just lovely. Great tree. So leave a comment down below if you know what kind of tree this could be so I can try and reach out. But here's the front area where I had come back and mowed a second time. Also, grass, lots of thick, lush grass. And uh, we're just kind of slowly working our way across back and kind of reclaiming some of this grazing area. But this is looking great. And I do want to keep a lot of the brush. Don't get me wrong. I don't want to get rid of all of it. I do love it. And I know that it's good habitat for certain animals. But um, we do need to reclaim some of the uh, area. Oh, look at these. These are pretty. Look at that. But, but um, I'll keep you guys posted on um, Annabelle and uh, the goats. Hopefully, here in the next couple weeks, we will be coming out with a video with baby goats or a baby calf. And we get to have all the babies and love on them. But uh, I'll keep you guys posted.